Here we go. There's this place up the valley, for years left alone, and yes, a river runs through it. They call it Yellowstone. In those earliest years, it took the hardiest of men to travel across that territory. It took the courage of ten. But now, a new breed has come to that park. They're out before sunrise, and they lurk in the dark. They work on their stories of what's to be told. Yeah, I've spun a few tales, and they never get old. So we line up our coaches all shiny and clean. Yes, even those bombardiers, those big, bad machines. We load up the coaches on top and in rear with hopes that those big tips soon will appear. <laughs> now, driving coaches in Yellowstone, you get home after dark. It's a whole lot of fun, but it ain't no walk in the park. The coaches are squirrely, and sometimes the road's untrue, and if not really careful, this could happen to you-know-who. So our adventure begins, great surprises await. We're never sure what we'll see, but we know we can't wait. Then we marvel at the mountains and we smile at the streams. This place is unreal with its icy cold extremes. And we talk of, the geolog we talk of geology, the science of stone. How the mountains were built out where? The Buffalo Roam. There we go. <laughs> that caldera exploded, throwing rock into space, changed the shape of this land all over the place. Then the lava flowed outward as far as you see, creating the ridges and petrifying the trees. Natural forces at work have created this scene. So what could be next? And what could that mean? Well, ice then covered that landscape 4,000 feet deep. It was cold and so snowy. Had Yellowstone gone to sleep? Then it thawed and it melted. The ice retreated uphill. It molded those mountains and in the valley dropped till. Then the park hissed and howled. Earthquakes shake up the ground. Beware where you walk, there's hot water underground. Mud pots with steam and thousands of pools. Hot springs galore and geysers so cool. And we show off the terraces as water cascades on down. They grow by the minute rising up from the ground. Travertine is deposited as hot gases escape. And with a palette of color, they form this landscape. Now, that old faithful geyser, it puts on a grand show. And it's never once failed. Well, as far as we know. Hot water shoots high up into the air. And then it bursts into steam with a magical flare. And barrel springs along the gibbon is a really hot pool. It bubbles and it boils, so don't be a damn fool. The steam rises up and it clings to the trees, forming goblins and ghosts that we all get to see. And those fountain paint pots, now, that's a curious place. Such a variety of features in such a small space. They bubble and burp and form a colorful soup, plus so easy to spot if you'll just drive the Grand Loop. And the runoff from pools flows into the streams, keeping rivers from freezing. For waterfowl, that's a dream. The swans and the geese you'll see swimming by, and out on the fire hole, you might spot Goldeneye. Now, wildlife abounds throughout Yellowstone Park, but surviving in winter is far from a lark. It's hard to find food, and it's bitterly cold. It's survival of the fittest. 
And that's not so good when we get old. There are thousands of bison wandering out there, you know, with strong muscles and huge heads. They plow through that snow. It's food that they seek as they try to survive. But by late in the winter, quite a few aren't alive. And we speak of the critters, the big and the small, the challenges they face as they survive through it all. We talk as they scavenge to get through their days, the predators out hunting, chasing down their favorite prey. The facts can be gruesome, as some live and some die. Our guests get the close-up, sometimes eye to eye. If it's Disney you seek, you've made a wrong turn. Surviving Yellowstone's winter, well, that's a life that is earned. We've talked of this place with the snow and the weather, and we talk of wildlife and how it all fits together. We've taken our guest on a most magical tour. By the end of each day of that, I am sure. Now, I've spent half my life in Yellowstone Park, where the wolves howl out loud and the coyotes bark. I've held various jobs over all of those years, but only snow coaching could drive me to tears. 